everybody. I believe we are live. Welcome back to a part two of our three-part special of A Very Humble Glowtide, a custom 5e Humblewood adventure written and DM'd by moi. Um, so thank you for joining us here on Girls Wednesday's Worlds. Um, and now that that's all the way, why don't we hand it off to our beautiful cast here. Uh, let's start with Moira. Say who you are and who you're playing today. I'm ready for this. Hi, I am Loira. I use she, they pronouns, and I can be found on Twitter, Twitch, and sometimes Instagram as ms underscore Winford. Today I am playing Wisteria, who goes by she, her pronouns, and is all around a delightful little somewhat anxious but eager mess of a Luma, who is a blue racing pigeon. And that's me. All right, Anita. Ooh, that's me. Hi, everybody. Anita is here. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. Today I will be playing Billie Jean, a Saravan goat uh, barbarian lady um, that uses she, her pronouns. Uh, I'm real excited to be here and get into it. Um, and I'll, I'm pretty sure that's all I needed to say. Oh, you can find me at Anita the Lesbian. Anita the Lesbian on Twitter and TikTok. Uh, if you like memes or just keeping up with me, I'll pass it back to the DM. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Anita. Uh, let's go to our now returned fourth member of the party who we'll get to fully introduce in a bit, but <laughs> Kaylin. Hi, um, I'm Kaylin. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm on Twitch as Inkmo, I-N-K-M-O underscore. Um, and also, we didn't roll for this, um, which is my D&D &D channel. And I'm playing Stick, a little uh, rogue gecko uh, who uses they, them, any pronouns, um, who likes shiny things and has a very sticky long tongue. <laughs> yes, very, very sticky. All right, and now let's fit round this off with Nev. Uh, yeah, hi everybody. I'm Nev uh, uh, at the Never Squid on all the social medias. I am a producer and player here on Girls Run These Worlds. Uh, I will also be on a Christmassy one shot on the 18th. <clears throat> I will be playing Sister Primrose, who is a, a Jerbeen. A hazel dormouse, golden fur, golden eyes, little fluffy tuft on the end of her tail. Uh, she is a cleric and is wearing uh, cleric robes with a big tree on the front. All right, beautiful. And once again, I am Natalie, your dungeon mistress for all this. You, I use she, they pronouns. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and most places with Ghost Candle or here on Twitch with Ghostly Candle. That's with an L-Y. Um, I do art. I do tabletop RPG stuff. I do things here. It's great. And remember, if you enjoy anything that you like on this channel, to throw down a follow and a subscribe as subscriptions help all of us who participate here at Girls Runs These Worlds. And we would love for all that support too, to just help everybody and bring in more delightful people into the fold that we have going on here. But with all that love, let us get into the recap for our story. So where we left off, three of our party members, Wisteria, Billie Jean, and Sister Primrose. You all were participating in the cheese wheel race. That was a tradition brought in by the Jerbeen uh, folk, which are a type of mouse-based uh, folk um, that have come to Elderheart, much like other races, but this is a tradition they brought in. Uh, Sister Primrose and Mysteria participated with Billie Jean watching, though learning very quickly it could be a little precarious as cheese can come flying at you. <laughs> but they're watching uh, this running of the cheese uh, Primrose and Mysteria did win uh, the race very triumphantly and as the delightful line from Billie Jean, congratulations you defeated the children <laughs> um, they donated their winning cheese wheel to the Historical Museum of Elderheart and regathered to enjoy the rest of their day um, by the evening hours as they were taking a bit of respite they started noticing around them all the lights just quickly popping off and going to darkness. 
And with their curiosity piqued, they saw the little creatures they would later learn to be city lopes. Um, and with an attempt to put the group to sleep, uh, they shook it off and watched as all these city lopes started to gather and run down the streets of Elderheart. Um, with caution and worries as Primrose thought about the stories of where these kind of things may have come from and that there was maybe a sleeping curse happening, uh, the group went to see if maybe they could find someone who was still awake to help them. They caught uh, the director at the museum, Harriet, uh, who was trying to catch a sooty lope that was running out of her house. Um, but as the sooty lope ran by the group, Wisteria gave it a good whack and poofed it out and became a nice little full figurine of the city lope. Um, grateful for the party's help, uh, Harriet um, talked about some of the stories she thinks may be involved in what is happening, that this might be a spirit that has been disturbed um, that surrounds kind of the essence of Glow Tide, and now that disturbance is reflecting um, upon the world of Humblewood. And that if the group wishes to try and prevent or undo what is happening, they may have to follow the trail and see where that may lead to. Um, but they do have a particular item on them, a golden bell that uh, Sister Primrose gathered from the ground when the group went to pull some toys out of a big red sack from a mob potch named Jasper. But currently only Sister Primrose can hear the nice clear ring of it, but it does have little etchings of a couple of running um, wild cats on it. So it's an interesting item. With that, they went to follow the trail, managed to avoid two really large, somewhat defensive, not quite out attacking them yet, but very dangerous uh, beasts, shadowy beasts. Not quite sure if they're really beasts. Um, and made their way to the gate uh, that leads into the ruins of an ancient city called Bramblewell. But before we join the three-o that made it that far, we're going to step back in time and join their fourth party member who was taking some time in hopes to join the group, but got a little sidetracked. So, Stick, would you care to take a moment to describe yourself and what you are doing? Uh, yeah, I'm Stick. So I've, I'm a speckled sort of greeny brown gecko folk. And I really wanted to join the cheese the cheese race. And I saw a really good big cheese. Um, and then I used my tongue um, to grab it. So it was tasty. So I had a little nibble. Um, and then I thought I would have more of a nibble. And then I maybe ate the whole cheese. Um, and then I had a nap. So, dear, dear Stick, <laughs> you went to a cheesery uh, mm -hmm. just in the northwestern district that you heard had really good cheese, and you thought, I'm going to run with cheese, get the best. Yeah. So you recovered it from uh, the shop called uh, Cheese and Mouse. It's a very mm -hmm. lovely gerbean that runs the shop, all sorts of cheeses, lots of samplings, easy to just eat to eat to eat. But yes, you did find yourself as you say got uh very peckish delighted in the cheese tastings um and took a little respite and just off in an alleyway but as you wake up your eyes blink and for a moment you think maybe your eyes are still closed as there's nothing but darkness around you yeah it um mm. Did someone turn the lights out? I'm pretty sure there were lights before. Um, and sort of look around. And I rub my eyes just in case to check they're open. <laughs> yeah. So you rub your eyes and blink. And yeah, as you adjust to the change of lighting, it does seem like it's just uh, the lights are out in Elderheart. Though it's a little odd as in the time you've been here, even when it's not glow tide, there is street lamps and lights that go on. But during glow tide, even nighttime feels like the day. But everything is dark. Hmm. Um, it's not very glowy. Can I look around and see if I can make anything out? 
you go take a step from the alleyway from your little napping spot. You look around. You see large soot marks almost making a solid line on the main fairway that you have before you. And you do catch over near the northwest gate a couple of guards that are asleep. And this is very far down the road. But as you are starting to look in that direction, you do catch light just passing off through the now open gate. Uh, just a big kind of round glow that seems to be coming from someone wearing maybe a mask? Um, I sort of look around and then just sort of go towards the light. Um, and that that sounds like that would be fun. And then I find a little bit of cheese that fell on um, my shoulder. So I, I eat it as I go. <laughs> so it's just a little bit of cheese. Still very, very good. But as you start <laughs> approaching, you realize the figure that is now a glowing beacon is familiar to you. And you see just kind of in the shadows next to them two other figures that are familiar to you as they are passing through the gate. Oh, oh, hello, Billy Jean. And I'm like, I wave. Oh, uh, stick. You, you are not asleep. We thought everyone was asleep. It is good to see you. Hello, it's good to see you too. I mean, I was asleep, but I ha I had a nap, and I maybe missed the race. Oh, but regular I, sleep, not cursed I, sleep. Cursed sleep? There are so many curses here for glow tide. There were never curses back home. It is strange tradition I do not like. I have brought my axe. <laughs> uh, she sort of like pokes out the hat pokes out the head of the axe from her bag that she, like, keeps slung on her shoulder before putting it back. <laughs> um, and then I, like, pat my rapier and, and I, I would give a knowing, like, nod. <laughs> uh, the flower people from church are here. Uh, there is a bell that only they can hear and we are going to ruins to fix the curse i think there was a hand oh. i think she is bad okay we will find just... out later <laughs> um i i'm gonna i'm gonna pinch billy jade and just be like am i am i actually awake or am i still asleep why would pinching me make you awake um... <laughs> I don't want to pinch myself. It hurts. <clears throat> uh, I'll, I'm, I'm just going to follow along and like, um, you can, maybe things will make more sense to me later. Um, Billie Jean catches you up on the walk down uh, yeah. and it does not make more sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh Gosh, like we're on this road into like a maze that goes to the ruins, right? Like yeah, so, describe it for me again, yeah. if you would. So, no problem. So the group is had just left the Northwestern Gate. That is a very ancient road that leads into the ruins that were once Bramblewell, which is a very old humble folk settlement or city. Uh, that existed even at the founding of Eldahart. That's where some humble folk used to live. Um, but in centuries ago, um, when there was a lot of strife and some um, environmental things happening, uh, a lot of the humble folk abandoned the city for the safety of the tree. Um, so now the city kind of lies in almost a labyrinthian ruins. And the general knowledge is pretty common amongst the group is not very many people take this road unless they're specifically going deeper into the woods um and for the most part these ruins tend to be kind of a harbor for bandits or criminals that uh prefer to keep some of their activities a little more secretive and out of the city
Uh, okay, I assume Billie Jean is taking the lead because she has the light-up mask. Oh, I I suppose so. Yes, I I completely forgot. Uh, Billie Jean's head is glowing, uh, with a light spell. Um, like she has her ski mask on. Um, like she would tell you that she's worried about like the smoke creatures. She would tell you that there are smoke creatures and that she's worried about them. Uh, and would offer you a ski mask as well, if you would like to take one, just to protect from inhaling stuff. <laughs> but no, her head is glowing. Uh, <laughs> that's probably the first thing you realized. Uh, and she will be like, uh, yes, uh, I will take lead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and she goes ahead. <laughs> Well, as the party goes forth with Billie Jean in the lead, it is quite dark out here compared to what you've become accustomed to in the city. And with the city slowly going dark from trunk to canopy, it just becomes a very dim environment. But luckily, the light does help you. And you can see a visible soot trail leading it into uh, the ruins, and you're able to follow that path. But out here, the night air is very fresh and crisp. Uh, you very visibly see your breath as you breathe in and out. Uh, gentle snow is falling from the sky, making it down through the canopy that's now somewhat broken up from the loss of leaf with the coming winter. Um, but you do see just the white blanket of snow and your feet crunching that as you go. Uh, following that city path, you just see the old broken stone walls that make up old buildings or courtyards and just the different segments of what may have been homesteads or community places. Um, just very circular sort of rounded buildings all missing uh, their rooftops. Maybe they might have been thatched or wooden, but they're long centuries gone and only maybe some weathered timber still standing. Um, through as you go, uh, with your movement kind of echoing softly off of the cold stone, you sometimes hear just the nightlife call out a hoot of an owl, a snow dropping from a tree branch. You even hear some chatter of creatures, and as you look up, you just see a swarm of ember bats, which everyone in Humblewood knows. They're little, tiny, bat-like creatures that have a bit of a flame that comes off their head. Um, usually in the winter, it's safer than to be more in the wood. Uh, but they're pretty cute, and they're a nice little light to watch as they kind of swarm and flitter above you and go away. Um, if anyone would like to make a investigation or perception check, if you're interested to find anything more going on. Um, I guess Billy Jean's in the lead, so she will attempt to make a perception check oh, oh sure she's proficient in this yeah let's uh, go let's see you do it and um i think sticks just always looking for stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh yeah same with sister primrose she's she ha doesn't tend to leave all their heart very often and she <laughs> is extremely extremely small and she is now out in the woods as a tiny mouse, and she's feeling very vulnerable. So she's looking around, and you can tell her little tail is shaking as she's just resolutely walking forward, but she's definitely nervous. All right. Every oh, you just got baller rolls on this perception. <laughs> right? Everyone did so good. You are all almost hyper-focused aware of the environment being the mix of for those that have never left the safety of Elderheart to those just not used to operating in a forest environment. You see tracks of various creatures, some small, some big. Um, especially for Stick, I'll say with the highest roll, you do take note of wolf tracks and other kind of more predator types, but you also see tracks of elk. Um, 
You do note also just very general kind of folk uh, footprints and movement. Maybe some wagons have been through here recently. Looking into any um, doorways or windowways that are still structured, even just over short walls. You do catch some signs once in a while of what may have been uh, old fire pits uh, that were long snuffed out. Um, obviously a sign that maybe some folk were in here and uh, taking a bit of a break for whatever activity they were doing. Um, and just signs of uh, scrounging going on, though being how old this place is, much of anything that may have been here long gone centuries ago. Um, but you keep, with all of you, you keep resolute on the sooty trail as well as awareness of your environment. And following along, uh, Sooty Lope does come up and start bounding in your direction, pouncing along the trail from behind you. Oh, look, there's another one of those sooties. I, I think we should follow it. Um, yeah, I think Billie Jean is going to turn to Stick uh, and say, do not breathe the sooty Lope. It will make you very sleepy. Okay. Do I, can I lick it? I do not know. We have not tried that yet. Okay. Maybe I won't be the first to lick it. Then. <laughs> Maybe that's a good idea. Um, but Wisteria does give a little startle at hearing this sound coming up from behind them. As mentioned, uh, this is the first time she's been out of um, Alderheart, and that's a little bit nerve wracking. Um, and this is, it is, seems like a bigger world because there isn't that like closed in feeling of the tree that she's so accustomed to. Um, but on seeing the city loop goes reflexively for her quarter staff and is like, no, we did that already. I'm um, just kind of keeps a grip on it, but otherwise just is content to keep following. Great. So as you all kind of take I guess uh, Billie Jean, who's in the lead, will sort of keep pace with, well, let the city low pass and then keep pace with it, uh, trying not to lose it. All right. So with you all taking a moment to let it pass, it does bound on by, almost unbothered by you all. So after a few feet getting ahead of you, it does stop for a moment and peer back. And you see it's two short little rabbit-like ears kind of perk up and dart a little bit and sort of looks in your direction before turning back around and following uh, the soot trail as it bounds about. As you follow it, uh, you see that it comes through a open doorway of what is kind of left of a home's wall. And there's just this rounded kind of arch where a door may have been. And it bounds right straight into there, into the darkness. Um, word, I guess, um, like, about how big is this opening? Like, this is just a door, right? Yeah, it's a doorway. Um, for the average humble folk, Billie Jean may have to step down a little bit. Okay. Um, but otherwise, it is big enough to fit folk through. Yeah, I think Billie Jean will, like, ask people to step back a little ways because like we're moving into a new place uh, and just sort of like peek her head in, just see what's what's what in here. Yeah. So you peek your head in and the light like just radiating from your head fills up the space. And it is a circular, uh, what may have been uh, just a standard simple homestead. There is no furniture. Whatever may have been has either been taken or rotted away. Um, though no signs of anyone having been in this space or lived in here, even just as shelter. Uh, you no longer see the sooty lope, but you do see a trail of soot that leads right into where there is still a fairly well-structured stone hearth that's sort of off almost in the opposite direction from the doorway you're at. Um, word. Do I, 
I guess do does Billie Jean get the sense that like this is where all of the city lopes have been headed? Because we were trying to find like where they were all gathering, right? Yeah. yeah. So you don't need to roll for this one. Um, based on the trail you've all been following, and now having seen that one city lope go, and you get a pretty solid feeling this is where they've all been turning into. Um. Word. Uh, I guess um, Billy Jean will turn back uh, and just report that um, it seems they have all gone into a small, like, hearth space. Uh, it might be magic or something. I do not know. Um, but it seems like they've all went in here. Maybe there is, like, a secret door. Hmm. So you can't see through anything? It just sort of ends? Like, it ends at the hearth, right, Natalie? Yeah, as you're looking and kind of reach your neck a little bit more to get in, um, you see it looks like a standard hearth. Like, the structure of it isn't too different from present-day hearths in a home. But you just see, like, the soot trail go up and into it and just the blackness of soot-stained stone inside. Uh, I want to have a look. So can we go through? You can actually go through, like, uh, the room? Yeah, to reiterate, it's just the stone uh, archway of what is remaining of a doorway and some of the wall. The roof is missing. Uh, much of the roofs are missing through the ruins of this place. Um, but it is a large kind of circular room. There's no furniture that's been left behind. And the only notable thing is the stone hearth. Um, yeah, I think Billie Jean will like cross the threshold and stand inside. So that stick can have some light as they <laughs> sort of like look through the place. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go up to the hearth and have a look. So does it just look, it's all sooty? Yeah, you see the trail that comes up. Um, If you want to make a perception check, you can go with it. Uh, While you're doing that, uh, Sister Primrose will uh, hold out uh, her, her sensor in front of her and cast light on the sensor as well. Okay. It's very dirty. And then yeah, it's just move, stone move and move. soot you stick. <laughs> but you do see as uh, Sister Primrose comes in with her light now, the space feeling a little more daytime in the, all the darkness. But yeah, it looks like a hearth. There's soot going into it. The inside looks pretty sooty. Do you just look? Um, I want to poke it with my rapier. Poke it with your poke around. I'm gonna poke around. So you try to poke around and you hear just the ting of your rapier against stone, and you see like little tufts of uh, soot kind of break up and little kind of smoky patterns from it, uh, just from being broken up. Um, But nothing seems to react to your sword. (laughs) Should we set it on fire? We can. Um, yeah, I think um, Billy Jean will say um, that um, the um, like the flower priestess, the flower priestesses are very good at uh, making fires. Uh, we. Uh, you should have seen them in the cheese race. There were fires everywhere. It was very, very nice. I liked grilled cheese. Uh, before I step doing, back. Before doing anything else, Sister Primrose pulls out the bell and rings it. So you See ring the bell happens. and hear it chime. And as uh, you're looking around, you do hear almost a chime back coming from within the hearth. Oh, wait. But we can't hear it? Like, I stick Yeah, Sister Pimrose can hear her bell 
Um, only she's been able to hear it so far, and after ringing it, she hears almost a soft chime echo back from the hearth. I don't see fire. <laughs> Um, while that's happening, you said, okay, so we have the hearth itself. Is there a chimney, even though there's no roof? Yeah, so taking note, it is still a fairly well-structured hearth. And you do see there is a bit of a chimney. The very top of it has crumbled away, but for the mm -hmm. most part, there is a bit of a chimney that goes up. Is there anything coming out of the chimney? Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. solid <laughs> so you look up and you squint hard mm -hmm. um even with the, now two light sources mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to tell with the falling snow and the dark above mm -hmm. um but you all have did catch uh, sister primrose ringing the bell and for those that are aware of not hearing it ring um you do wonder as uh, her eyes kind of look in the direction of the hearth Hmm. Uh, it feels like sooty lopes go into hearth. Um, maybe there is a secret passage we do not know about? Um, yeah, I guess that... Yeah, she's not good at, like, looking for secret passages. Like, usually when there's, like, an impassable like place to go through. She just like kicks down the door and then it's mm -hmm. done. Um, but like this place doesn't seem very stable and she doesn't want to like just go in at like a structural place. Uh, mm -hmm. She will look for secret levers that like you pull and the mm. bookcase shifts. <laughs> like that happens in books and stick uh, stick likes to touch everything all right and we'll also look around investigate so stuff. describe how you are approaching this hearth are you just sticking to like the exterior trying to find any potential push or pull or are you also going to reach inside um no i think billy jean is definitely like reaching inside like digging around in the soot like making a pretty big mess of it like her gray fur is probably going to be like very much matted and soot um she'll be like putting away like turning away from <laughs> her from the like soot because she knows it makes people sleepy but like also trying to like figure out where where did they go and then when um, Billy Jane's not looking, Stick's like going, you missed a spot, and just like keeps pointing at places. <laughs> okay. Well, in the moment, Billy Jean, as you're preparing to have your fur covered in soot, as you reach your hand in, you feel a sudden gust of cold, and to the rest of the party, you just see Billy Jean puff out in soot and smoke, and then get all that suck into the hearth. Billy Jean! I jump. I'd I'd like try to grab. I go after. Alright. Same yeah. thing with you, Stick. You feel the sudden cold, though you have a ring that keeps you very warm. So yeah. you don't really notice that change. But you do get the sense of a sudden shift in yourself, and to everyone else you just become soot and smoke and sucked into the hearth. Uh where did they what? What do we, Sister Primrose? Primrose what do we do? Will jump, Primrose will jump right after Wait. them and just like I have, <laughs> like, not not even saying anything, just like in that look look on her face of like, oh god, I got to do something, and just jumps. Um, faced with being alone in the spooky ruins in the spooky forest and being sucked into a chimney, uh, Wisteria is gonna follow everyone else. All right. So on the other side, starting with Billie Jean, you feel the sensation of becoming almost weightless and just a rush as everything your vision goes black. 
before once again you feel the weight of your body and just really intense coldness all around you. And as you adjust to the change, you realize you're now in a space that almost reflects where you were before. But instead of ruins, you are in a homestead. But instead of snow, every inch of it is encased in ice. Um, Billy Jean has been paranoid about curses since the jump of this weirdness. Uh, mm -hmm. And she believes that is exactly what happened, uh, that she is asleep and now cursed. Uh, she's gonna she's gonna take out her her great axe and she's gonna grip, grip it real tight and just be looking around for for what whatever comes for you when you're cursed uh, and Beautiful. asleep. Beautiful. Well, very quickly as you're starting to get yourself in your barbarian ready stance, stick almost rushes up. Uh, following that same sensation and shows up beside you. And then... Rah! <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go? Ah. You got cursed too. No, you went, you went, whoosh! And then I went after you. Oh, you know, I do not know anything about magic. Everything is ice. This this feels like bad news. I feel like we might be in for it this time, Stick. And then another whoosh and whoosh. And Sister Primrose and Wisteria join you too. Ah, ah! Ah. <laughs> Billie Jean startle Wisteria's wings go out in a minute. Ah! <laughs> And then looks around like, where, what, where is, what happened? Where are we? Yeah, now with two combined light sources, as uh, you kind of started to get initially coming to the space, you are in a circular kind of home. You see a table in front of you uh, with what looks to be a dinner that may have been halfway through, but almost completely covered and encased in ice as though just frozen in a time. Uh, there's chairs, there even around the hearth, you see utensils and cooking materials that one would use to make soups or stews over the fire. Uh, you see rugs on the floor, you see a stairway that goes up um, and a solid rounded door that you assume hopefully goes outside. Every inch of everything seems to have just a good, um, like, half inch to an inch of ice on it. Whew. This is so cold on my paws. And she will ring the bell again to see if the sound comes from somewhere. All right. So as you're all kind of shivering the space, and it is unusually cold here compared to where you were, even the winter. Um, and you do feel if you linger too long without a chance to heat yourselves up, you may have a little trouble down the road. But as you ring that bell, sorry, were you going to say something, Anita? Billy Jean? Oh, no. Billy Jean is just going to, like, take out, like, knitted scarves that she's done just, like, in her spare time. And, like, she has extras if people want them and will offer them. Uh probably to Loira because she knows that stick doesn't get cold. Um, no, probably to Wisteria because she knows that stick doesn't get cold it's and cold Sister Primrose is doing something. <laughs> right. But yes, Sister Primrose, as you ring the bell, you do hear a very distant but very faint uh, chime back and you feel just a very slight pull on the bell that's trying to lead you outside. Well, um, I think the bell's trying to lead us to where we're supposed to go, so I guess we go that way? Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I think uh, Billy Jean sort of steals herself, like hands still like gripping the, <laughs> like gripping the great axe, but like now she's in a very like fluffy, very like well knitted <laughs> uh, scarf, um, and uh, she just sort of nods and starts inching her way towards the door towards the door all right um the door will take a little bit as with everything else it is sort of in a case of ice um but you can either work together or billy jean you want to try a strength check on the door or other methods open to the party <laughs> um if it's like frozen um like it it's gonna take a while to just muscle it um i think she'll like i think she'll just like look to everyone and like raise her axe just to see is it cool if i just like topple this thing uh and it's just gonna wait and see if anybody objects. Sticks to uh, smash, 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 smash. Sister Primrose will pull her shield off her back and uh, hold the bell is and like tie the bell to the arm that is holding the shield so she can still feel the pull but without having to like hold it. And just uh, you notice now that she is actually wearing armor under her robes. Um, which uh, is just a thing that priests do, apparently, because many of them wear armor. <laughs> um, and uh, she just sort of nods and waits to see what Billie Jean's going to do. Um, Wisteria will step forward with a very small flame kind of starting between her wings. Like, well, we could try to melt it a little bit. Um, Billy Jean will, uh, take down the, take down the axe and, uh, step back. He doesn't know much about magic. It's, like, this all feels very magical. So, like, if you, like, the people that can make fire out of their wings probably know better in this situation. Um, I think not with the intent of completely melting it down just enough that Sister Primrose and Billie Jean can use their weapons against it. Um, Wisteria would like to use Create Bonfire on the door. Alright. Um, so you conjure up your bonfire much like you've used in the race that gentle morning dawn glow appears and the fire splinters across the doorway. The ice does begin to melt quite quickly of against your magic, but in turn, it is also trying to reclaim the door. And you do feel in that moment that you probably want to move quickly to get this open before the ice starts forming again. Um, the ice is coming back, so if you both want to get this down, um, and she's going to try and like make sure they're not going to be on fire when they go and attack this thing. Oh, uh, well... If the ice is melted, she's probably going to put her great axe away and just try to open the door with the handle, if that is possible. Unless it is a front door that locks from the outside, this should be simple. I believe, like, this is Billy Jean's logic. Yeah. <laughs> D&D, &D, no door is simple. <laughs> unless, unless they're cursed and, like, every door is out to get us, then... Uh, but she'll first, at least, try the doorknob. Yeah. So you try the doorknob, and it, it isn't locked, so you're all, you are able to turn it. Um, however, as you are, you are feeling resistance as there is ice rapidly trying to reclaim the door, and you can kind of see it frosting up along the wooden pattern trying to reach back up towards your hand all right she'll all right. she'll try to muscle it <laughs> uh 
yeah, she'll try to she'll try to muscle it out before the ice forms too much. Uh, you can give me. Well, you can decide whether you want to do a strength check or if you have another option you'd like to try. Uh, would my athletics be applicable? Yeah, totally. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'll. Um, yeah, I feel like Billy Jean is nervous at this point, seeing like the ice unnaturally crawl back very, very quickly. I think she's going to get spooked into a rage uh, and make an up advantage athletics check because uh, there's a class feature. Yeah. That's not a good thing, though. It's okay. <laughs> um, should, should that not work? Can Sister Primrose just surreptitiously chitter something in Jerbeen and cast Thaumaturgy, which slams open unlocked doors? <laughs> All right. <laughs> to make it look like Billie Jean succeeded? Does definitely help. So, Billie Jean, whether you understand that magic or not, up to you, but you do feel the sudden jerk of the door as you press yourself to get it open and dart out. <laughs> yeah, I think Billie Jean just like stumbles out of the door, like could feel herself like not being able to like muscle it out and then like whoop and just like shivers not because it's cold it is cold but magic is creepy uh and <laughs> curses are weird we hate to see it but um we're we're outside now uh what what what's happening in alternate dimension ruins <laughs> Yeah, what is happening? So as you all step out following Billie Jean, um, you see what is essentially a village. There are all complete stone homes, somewhat semi-circular, uh, having either thatched or, root or wooden tile roofs to them, uh, full chimneys. You see uh, just blackened out string lights between and decorations all over the place. But much like what it was inside of the space that you were in, everything is covered in ice out here. And not just a layer of it, there's now spires of ice that are jetting out in a direction, um, coming off the buildings from where um, you almost feel like where the wind might have pushed it in the direction of. Um, but everything's kind of in these spires, and it almost feels like what... Uh, Maybe what Bramblewell may have been like once upon a time during Glow Tide. Just seeing what uh, decorations are underneath the ice and sort of those home traditions that are still recognizable, even though this feels older than what you are used to. Is there any sign of the Sooty Loops? Uh, give me a perception check. All right. Very good. So, Wisteria, in your heightened state, you are super aware and keeping a perceptive eye ready to defend yourself in the group. And you're looking now trying to see of any path of the city loops. And it seems like the soot itself has disappeared since the group entered the space. Um, but as you look around with that critical perception, a couple things you note. One is all those spires of ice almost look like they're coming out from a radial pattern from some sort of source. Um, so you know it almost feels like they came from something. Uh, your second thing you notice and became super aware of is that there seems to be kind of folk-like shaped shadows that are just sort of slowly wandering in the peripheries beyond your light sources. Don't seem to have taken any aggression, but they're there. Don't like that. Um, it's going to point out the shadows to people first. It's like, do, does everyone else see it? these um and then point out the ice and ask sister primrose then if 
the bell seems to be pulling in the same direction as where the ice seems to be coming from. Is it? Yes, so as uh, Wisteria points this all out to you and you're all regarding like the shadowy figures, uh, you, Sister Primrose, do feel the bell is pulling in that direction down the street. And yes, for everyone else, you are seeing these shadows that resemble a likeness to humble folk and bird folk, though their lights kind of dissipate into a sort of shadowy mist. And as they look like they're about to approach uh, your group, they catch the edge of your light sources and then back right off in kind of a wispy, uh, almost mist sort of action. Well, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> not at all. Uh, Wisteria is giving a little shiver in part because of the cold, but also because this is in fact incredibly creepy. Um, yeah, I think Billie Jean is going to try to like reach into her bag, take out like a torch and mm -hmm. try to light it. Uh, like, will it catch flame? Yeah, so you make your attempt to light your torch, and it does catch flame. It's not as uh, bright as you've hoped, but it is creating a source of light and heat for you. Uh, that. Uh, she'll, like, go ahead and just, like, squash out the torch flame. Um, just to save it for later. But, uh... Good to know that we can make our own light uh, and that the shadow curse things uh, don't like the light. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she'll just like, uh, I think she's gonna like go up to stick and say, um, I, I hope this is not like normal tradition for uh, glow tide, like town wide curses. Uh, I don't think I could do this many winters in April. No, it's very strange. And it's a, a little less fun than it was when I had the cheese. Oh, you. You found the cheese. I thought you were going to uh, participate in cheese race, but I did not see you. Yeah, I got, I got, I found a real good fast cheese, fast looking cheese. And then it was very tasty. You ate whole cheese. I ate a whole, whole cheese. cheese wheel. Yeah, and, and then that's why I had to have a nap. Because I ate, I ate the whole cheese. Well, those cheese wheels are almost as big as me. Much bigger yeah. than you. you. Yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> Billie Jean is <laughs> Im impressed, shocked, like, looking at your dimensions and just being like, <laughs> You wow. notice my belly's a little bit more protruding than it normally mm. is. <laughs> uh, wow. Like, uh, stick can fit all. It's a really a good cheese. cheese. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> had cheese like that before. Uh, did you taste your cheese? Oh, I did not actually. Uh, I, I did not participate, but a cheese almost hits me in the face. Oh, no. Uh, so apparently this means it is now mine. Uh, I will try cheese. Uh, <laughs> like she will just open up the wax wrapper. Uh, like oh. give it a sniff. Were you not meant to eat that bit too? Oh, my apologies. Um, like thinks it's custom to eat their wax wrapper and we'll just <laughs> um, yeah I think she's it was rolling on the ground so I think she's gonna like take out her water skin like 
wash off the cheese, like all of the like ground snow, and then just take a bite into the wax. Uh, uh, how's the wax slash cheese? Uh, <laughs> so the, the wax is an interesting bit as it does kind of melt a little bit in your mouth. You're like trying to make it through that first sensation of texture. And then, yeah, once you actually hit the cheese part, the cheese itself is super delicious. Mm. Um, the outside is like uh, hard candy and then yeah, caramel strange. inside. It is The inside is good. Mm. Yeah, you're, you're not supposed to eat the outside, but that's just to keep the cheese from spoiling. <laughs> um, oh, it's not like a fruit? Um, no. No, okay. that's just what we put around the cheese to keep it safe. It's not usually like a fruit, but maybe by, by it the can time be. Said, <laughs> by the time you have said this, half of the cheese wheel is gone. It's way um, too late. <laughs> <laughs> just imagining Sister Primrose and Wisteria in the corner watching this happen, like, we should say something. They're really into this, but we should say something. Oh, I I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Primrose you did. She is absolutely like, what are you doing? This is an <laughs> offense to cheese. <laughs> uh, oh gosh, yeah. Um, apologies to all of the Jerbean out there. Uh, Billy Jean doesn't know any better. Uh, <laughs> but um, she'll like. <clears throat> get half of it like down the gullet and put the rest in her bag for later. Uh, I I can see how you eat a whole thing. It is very uh, addictive once you uh, start uh, eating. Mm -hmm. Just we are in the middle the of an ice time. place. Uh, should we? <laughs> <laughs> Um, should we figure this out? Um, there is, uh, a spire of ice. We need to find the center. Yep, Bell says, let's go this way. Um, um yeah, I yep. think... It's, it's that way. And she's just, like, already starting to, like, move that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think Billie Jean's stomach has a little bit of the wax grumblies for a second. <laughs> uh, and like, there's a big like sort of like grumble. She'll like hold her stomach for a bit. It'll calm down and she'll be like, okay, uh, and start off uh, towards the scary ice spires. Uh. <laughs> yes. Right, so you all follow in the direction that uh, Sister Primrose is now uh, taking lead on with the bell. And yeah, you do take note of just all these... Um, it's almost like if water was flash frozen as it hit something. It just has those little spires of ice coming off it. And they're all just forming out in a circular kind of radial pattern from one spot. So as you're walking down the somewhat icy cobble streets, catching note of uh, different decorative displays in the ice. And there's some times where you think maybe that is an actual ice sculpture. Um, you see more of these kind of shadowy, uh, ghostly, humble folk um, entities drifting apart, but still as they approach your light, they kind of back right off again. And once in a while, you do catch a skitter of a ice mefit, um, which in Humblewood, mefits are no thing, so it's not an uncommon knowledge, but you do catch what appears to be an ice mefit, and they kind of just skirt or skitter around and chatter before disappearing back off into the darker recesses. Um, you walk through uh, the main street as you pass through the sort of center, what you assume might be the center square of this village. Uh, in the middle of it is a stone uh, fountain, and along its edgings, there's uh, kind of carved, embossed uh, scenes of humble and bird folk, um, all doing different uh, scenes of feasting and gift giving and other traditions. 
Um, but that's all along the outer edge of this fountain. And then a stone pillar in the middle leads up to a clock that's sort of just frozen at a time just before midnight. And there is what seems to be what is a glockenspiel, so sort of that kind of cuckoo clock-like structure that would display um, a scene when the hour strikes, um, but is unfortunately just trapped and frozen in ice. But as you do continue your path, you do catch one of the scenes on the fountain. Um, is of uh, a cheese race. You see three jumping jerbeen chasing after one giant cheese wheel that eclipses them, um, but each one just kind of jumping around it. Um, I want to like fling my tongue out, just like it's just a reaction because I saw cheese, and we just literally talked about <laughs> cheese. I'm gonna... So you see the. <laughs> etching of the cheese in the stone you instinctually throw your tongue out towards it yeah and, and because for... it's stone it should pull me towards it yeah. i think okay <laughs> totally you stick it and you're like huh and yeah you feel your body lurch forward and for a brief brief second before you feel your ring warm up your tongue is stuck there you go to try and pull it back you're like eh. <laughs> <laughs> But then your ring almost gets a bit of a glow on your hand and your tongue unsticks. Um, I just sort of have a closer look <laughs> the relief that the etching. <laughs> now that now that I'm here, <laughs> it's not real cheese. Yeah, uh, I think I think Billy Jean is going to. Um, just sort of roll her eyes and be like, classic stick. Um, like, I imagine before we got them that ring, stick had, like, it gets cold up in the mountains, and stick had, like, stuck themselves <laughs> to so many icicles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, like, I feel like we just had to get them that ring, like, after it a was, while. It was a real problem. <laughs> some, some like, nice memories, like, passed by um, before she, like, comes up to join. Do I recognize the Jerbeen at all? Like, from yeah, a fairy so... tale, or are they historical people, or... <clears throat> You take a closer look. Um, you can give me history or religion check. Jeez. We're getting so many crits this campaign. <laughs> All right, religion check. So as you take a closer look, and as you note kind of the line work in Kurt carving of it your brain immediately snaps back to an image you've read from an ancient scripture of when the traditions of the cheese wheel run first came up which was centuries ago um but this etching matches that illustration almost like line for line it doesn't know any historical jerbeen but it is um interesting that it reflects that image so perfectly. Well, that's very strange. This is, like, exactly the picture of a storybook. What's the story about? Oh, about when we started the cheese wheel races. Oh, of course, you missed the thing. I explained to Billie Jean. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, back, you know, a long time ago, there was an abbey, and um, they made their own cheese, and at some point, they would have to get the cheese down the hill from where they were being aged to the abbey, and they had to roll them down the hill, and they made a sort of a game out of it. 
and we've been doing it ever since. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going. <clears throat> the cold is getting to you, sister. It's okay. <laughs> but this is like exactly like the storybook drawing. I don't understand. Maybe we need to roll cheese uh, to break curse. Do we know where Cheese Barn is in this uh, frozen town? If that's the answer, I suppose it'll be in the middle where the bell is. Hey, I'm um, taking. Go ahead. You had mentioned that it was just before midnight on the clock in the square. Do we know what time it was when we left our not our less cursed reality? <laughs> yeah, so when you were in an elder heart, it wasn't too too late. Um so the timing doesn't quite match up. Um but you're you're pretty insightful. Um It could just be that either it may have been before midnight uh, last night. Um, uh, you said that clock was broken, though. Yeah, it is oh. like everything encased in just pure ice and the spires coming off it, like those ice spires coming off it in a direction. Um, yeah, Wisteria's line of thinking was like, mm, if it's frozen on a certain time, do we have until that time to figure this out? <laughs> And if so, how much time have we got? Oh, you still have a few hours. Like, it was early evening, so like 7 o'clock-ish, 8 o'clock-ish. Um, but yeah, as you're noting the time, you do see on all sides of that uh, central column that there is a golden plaque that sort of glistens out from behind the ice. Um, I'll just use your previous perception for that. Um, you do read what says is Hearthcrest. A sister Primrose, does your story did it talk about hearth hearthcrest? I don't know, did it? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um, no, that that doesn't sound familiar. It's certainly not where the cheese wheel races started. Hmm. Okay, well what the is, is that <laughs> Is that where you're hearing the bell from? The clock bell? Do clocks have bells? Clocks have bells? Some clocks nice. can have bells. Well, sister where Primrose, is the, the bell pulling? Yeah, it's pulling you now, and now that you're in the central square, it's pulling you uh, further through the town and towards what you see. A little hard with how dark it is here, but you do see sort of a faint dark silhouette of what might be a hill with a building on top in the distance. Well, I think we have to go up there. Maybe? Uphill. We must roll the cheese. <laughs> you are well, in for it... treats. We have cheese rolling champions. They destroy <laughs> the children of the town. <laughs> Easily. They should probably introduce um, some cheese eating contests too mm, that would be a good idea that that's a thing um, but that's not what the cheese wheel race is for okay if you say so because uh, i they i haven't told them yet mm -hmm. sure and then i just walk a little bit faster I think Billie Jean's eyes go wide at the prospect of just seeing Stick go to town just <laughs> on a wheel of cheese bigger than themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, well, it it is a scary thought and just <laughs> like, also like a, this is a bit of a mar modern marvel. It's like, It's like it's a, how, a body how long was I away for? But in terms of time, 
Yeah, so the calculate how fast I ate cheese. Hours. Yeah, the cheese race was like oh. early, mid-afternoon to have everyone get their cheeses ready and participate and then donate after. So yeah, it's been several hours. <laughs> the cheese was just so good. But yeah, so leaving the fountain in kind of the main central square, uh, you will follow the path up towards the hill and make your way up. And as you do, you pass by a very simple but wooden sign, again, encased in ice like everything else, that has written on it, uh, kind of carved out and painted in a deep burgundy red uh, fires uh, workshop. And as you look up towards the building, it does look like it might be just a really big stone building with wood and timber and just kind of stone foundation. Uh, somewhat semi-circular space and you see a large uh, chimney coming off from one side and to the next of it is a stable area um, just kind of jetting out um, but yeah you come up to the building and from up here you can see that from what you notice is an open door almost all the ice is splintered and the, those kind of uh, icicles jetting out from where that open doorway is and radiates out from there. Well, I think that's where we're supposed to go. Um... Yeah, I think that I think that Billie Jean turns to stick um, and uh, sort of like grasps the great axe uh, and says, uh, "Shall we uh, cut the cheese?" <laughs> uh <-huh. coughs> Sorry, I, could I you make read funny. A... Yeah, that is is very funny. <laughs> uh, could you just redescribe what we see again? <laughs> So you are just passing the simple wooden sign uh, with gravings and painted on it, uh, Far's uh, Workshop. And you do see a place of wood and stone uh, with kind of cobbled stone foundation, uh, rather large, probably more accommodating to Billy Jean's size than the rest of the group. Um, and it has a big chimney on the one far side and on the other that you'll be passing is a large um, sort of stable um which anyone in the group can easily assume might be for some type of animal or a couple animals but there's a large stable you'd be passing by heading into the house which has its doorway open and all the ice um kind of an icicles and spires bursting out in that pattern out from the doorway and radiating out from there and through the town so do we pass the stable before the the door or is it just Okay. Yeah. I want um is it open stable or is it a closed building? Uh no, it is a open stable. There is like a couple little uh half doors for where the stalls are for at least two creatures and they're big doors. So you can assume that the whatever creatures may have been living in here are large. I think a stick wants to have a little peek as we go past. Yeah, give me a perception check. And anyone else, anyone else too, if they're curious. <laughs> All right. So for Sister Primrose and Wisteria, I think just the quick notion of seeing this really big stall that could almost be a home to you and knowing it's for another creature might be a little startling <laughs> may not feel the best <laughs> don't love that <laughs> so you're more worried about something whatever that is being around than what you are seeing there but for you stick as uh you're passing by you do note on each stall there is a golden name plaque underneath the ice that says one says holly and one says pine and taking a quick peek in is might need a little bit of a jump in your step to look into well the i stalls. could climb so i probably like just shimmy up and have a look over so you take a quick look and climb up 
And in the t interior of the star stalls, it is quite massive and like for Wisteria and Sister Permos would feel like a comfy home to you if it wasn't an animal stall. Um, you do catch inside just a rather large circular beds for each one, as well as a water bowl and a feeding bowl. And one of the feeding bowls does have just encased in ice a, a half eaten bone with a little bit of meat, meat on it. Okay. Uh, shimmy back down and I, I tell them what I saw. Big bed. Big. I don't, I don't think I like that very much at all, actually. I know you've said it three times, but that's not where we need to go in. The door is past this. Okay. Yeah, there is um, a open doorway to the workshop. Okay. I think Wisteria would be interested in urging herself and others past the big scary stable. And towards the big scary house, uh-huh. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but to our knowledge, there isn't a bone with some recently, maybe recently eaten meat in it, so that sounds less immediately dire. Does the building have windows as well? Or is it just at the door? Yeah, there is some circular windows and uh, they're well frosted and uh, mm. covered in ice, much like everything. So it's a little hard to peek in. It's also pretty dark in there. I like, I nudge Billie Jean. Does, does Billie Jean still have a big glowing face? Yeah. I nudge you for it. Uh, light the way. <laughs> I, I light the way. Um, yeah, I will be the first to enter this uh, place. All right. So as you enter first, Billie Jean, you do see before you what appears to be a workshop. The room is a semi semi-circular space. Um, you are coming in from what, I'll give directions for this, from the western entryway. Uh, you see along the walls uh, storage shelves that just line the walls. Um, and in the middle of the room is just a really long work table slash bench. Uh, from what you can tell on initial entry is just covered um, in work materials and half-finished toys. Um, there. Eastern wall keeping note on any entryways or hallways, just in cases. You only note one archway that leads to a staircase. Um, otherwise, the only other notable thing is a large um, kind of fire pit hearth um, on the northern side of the room. So it's to your left upon entry. Um, yeah, I... Guess I will turn to, um, I guess I'll turn to Sister Primrose uh, and ask, um, is your uh, magic bell uh, pointing you towards anything in particular in this room? That is a good question that I will <laughs> pose to our DM. Yeah, so as you step through the th uh, threshold, uh, you do feel your bell gets a kind of warmth to it and almost a familiar um, presence that you are used to from your faith when you call upon your own magics. And it's just very soft, but it's there. Um, and as you look about the room, it's no longer trying to pull you in any direction. It just seems to be you are here. And if I ring it? Uh, you give it a solid ring, and you do hear a chime. And this time, all three of you hear it, too, as you're in the space. Oh, the bell is working. The bell's working. We, I heard it that time. It was working the whole time. Uh, but okay. Do we win? Uh, is Glowtide not cursed anymore? I'm pretty sure the ice would be gone if it wasn't. That's his fair. Um, 
Yeah, I guess last time the answer was in a fireplace. So I think that Billie Jean is also going to go towards the fireplace very like cautiously uh, mm -hmm. and try to check it out. Okay. Um, well, as you look, anyone can give me perception or investigation, whatever you feel is best for how you want to look at this place. I am so perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, going from lowest to high for this, uh, Sister Primrose, maybe you're just caught up now that everyone can hear the bell. Um, so however you feel about that, you're just caught in that moment, a little distracted. Um, for Stick and Billie Jean, um, I suppose, I shouldn't suppose, Stick, how are you looking about the space? Um, I'm always looking for just things that will catch my eye that are shiny or green. That is easy enough. As you catch along those uh, shelves of walls, you see toys, dozens mm. of toys and ornaments. And as you're looking beyond the uh, ice that encases them, you see some tin toys, you see some plushies, you see ornaments, all of different kinds. Um, and for those that had pulled a toy from Jasper, when Stick is pointing out that through their excitement, you're like, oh, that toy matches what I pulled. And you do see that there is spaces where the glass kind of left a void, or not glass, but the ice left a void and the, a toy should have been there. Um, Billie Jean, you go around the hearth looking for something and you do see around there, there are tools of creating uh, molds for tin toys and um, glass blo blowing supplies to create ornaments. Um, but as you look around, you do see above the thick timbered mantle that there is a portrait. And as you're starting to point that out, Wisteria, with your highest perception, you look up to it and just underneath the ice, you catch what is a portrait of a Aloran. He is standing tall, uh, looks kind of like a bobcat, but has much longer ears than one, and is also of pure kind of snowy white fur with some speckles of almost sooty-colored uh, fur, like little speckles of it. They have incredibly curled whiskers and really thick, curly kind of mane that comes around their neck and in front of their chest. They're wearing a kind of minty uh, pine green suit with white fur trimmings and black leather boots and gloves. But the two things you notice most on it is a bright red bag with a gold lining spilling out toys beside their feet. And around his neck is a burgundy ribbon tied in a bow and a familiar golden bell hanging from it. And he's just standing there looking incredibly jolly and friendly. That's one of Gord's portrait. Um, and two, she is going to turn to Sister Primrose uh, and at first just do a gesturing motion, like it matches um, before using her words um, and pointing at the bell in the portrait. Like, is that, is that the same bell that, it looks like the same bell that you, is it the same bell that you have? Uh, Primrose will do her best to sort of hold it up. She is very small, but she's gonna hold it up where she can sort of see both at once. Are they the same? As you hold it up and kind of try and squint through the glass, very faintly in that kind of painting of it, it has the same etchings on it as the bell does. Uh, I think Billie Jean is probably under the impression that like, oh, the mapak we met that like had this bag must have like stolen a bunch of like stuff and trinkets from this like place. And now this place has cursed the entirety of the Alder Heart. So she's gonna be like, of course, 
sometimes men did swipe things. It happens. Oh, uh, she's Who going to would reach do into. That? <laughs> she's going to reach into her uh, bag, pull out the I think silver bell that she mm-hmm. had gotten, uh, and look to see if there is a place that it fits. That like in the gaps of the ice that you had mentioned. Yeah, you kind of compare to the different shelves and you see one part of the wall where it has kind of hooks with various ornaments on it. And you do see a section of it is dedicated to silver bells and when the ice there is areas that are missing. Uh, I'll, I'll hang the silver bell on, on one of the missing areas and hopefully break the curse. <laughs> And live happily ever after. <laughs> so as you put the ornament on, before I go into this, is there anything else someone is doing? Or are y'all just watching Billy Jean? Just watching. I think Wisteria had the same idea, so I think seeing Billy Jean going to do it would be po- like getting ready to do the same, but is going to see what happens first. <laughs> All right. So, Billie Jean, you put the ornament back, and it's sort of awkward because there's still ice encasing the whole area, so you try and fit it in as best you can and step away. Um, And you take a still breath as you're waiting for something to change. And everyone waits. And waits. And for the moment, you think, okay, maybe this isn't quite right. Uh, You hear a very soft rumble coming from the stairwell and as you turn to look there is a quick like hissing wind that jets out and swirls and following it is just tendrils of shadowy darkness and from it it quickly forms into a creature that's almost basically a little bigger than you billy jean they have long tall ears fully blackened as though they were made of soot and coal themselves and their eyes burning in a fire ember and kind of embery fiery sparks coming from their mouth. Uh, Their clothing that you can tell is on them is all tattered and blackened and just a bit um, of an ember glow coming off the very tail end of their tail. Um, And they're just full claws and just this shadow spirit hissing and roaring out towards all of you, ready to just strike. And that's where we're going to break. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Billy Jean, fine. certified curse breaker. <laughs> ah. um, definitely bring her along on your on your quest uh, to deal with magic curses. She she knows what to do. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Perfect. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we're going to go for a quick 15 so everyone can get rehydrated, washroom, medications, any other needs uh, that they need to do at this time. Uh, also remind everybody to remember to uh, subscribe to our channel here as well as YouTube as subscriptions help everyone that participates in Girls Wins Worlds and on our channel. Um, and yeah, we will come back in 15 to see what this mysterious angry entity is all about. See you in a bit.
everybody, welcome back. Hope you remember to hydrate, bathroom, take medications, whatever it is you need to do to keep yourself healthy and comfortable. Because things have gotten very uncomfortable with our group. They, just a quick recap, went through the ruins of Bramblewell trying to follow the sooty trail that led to a hearth. And from there, with uh, the peeking around of Billie Jean, got whisked away into another realm to where or when or what? Uncertain. But following the path and the jingle of Sister Primrose's bell, they find themselves in a workshop and they were starting to piece together the mystery of how the curse uh, that has befallen Aldehart and maybe the greater of Elder or uh, Humblewood. Who knows? But as they are starting to piece together, a creature of shadow comes whooshing out from uh, the stairwell and entering the space, full on aggression and ready to strike. So I need everybody to roll initiative. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> So interesting. So uh, for our audience, the top of the round actually starts with this shade. Um, so on their turn, I'll say since Billy Jean, you moved about the space, he's going to go and chase you down. So he's going to run up to you and do a multi-attack, a bite and a claw. And you just hear like that roiling kind of wintry wind hiss almost explode out of them. So first, the attempt of bite. Which you rolled a 12 to try and snap his fangs onto you. Oh, that's gonna miss. Oh, great. Yeah. Um... Like, my dex is only a plus two, but my con is a plus four. So that adds together, and that's a 16, because I'm a, I'm a barbarian. So Sweet. So describe how you manage to like, just break out from where uh, this entity tries to bite down on you. Yeah, I feel like, uh, like I'm a, almost about to dodge out of the way, but then, like... I, I can see that, like, they're about to, like, catch me anyway. And I just, like, very, like, quickly shift from, like, dodge out of the way of the bite to hold the jaw open uh, so that it does not bite. So I just, like, have have their, like, uh, I guess, uh, mouth, like, first held open, then, like, shut. <laughs> uh <laughs> but they do have one more claw attack um, yeah. <laughs> that they can use against me. So. Yeah. so you go and snap their jaw shut. And it is a weird feeling as you touch their face. It, it does feel like you just sunk your hands into a pile of soot and dirt and ash. And you think you should be feeling like warmth or heat, especially with the glow that's coming from their eyes and their mouth. But it's actually really really cold to touch but as you snap their jaw in you just see their big kind of muscular arm uh, come in with clawed hand try and strike you Oops. Da -da -da. and as that swoops down i guess he's just so distracted by someone now having touched his face that his claw with an 11 is coming and you see it a mile away at this point. So how do you dodge yourself from this situation? Uh, yeah, I think with the second claw, I can like sort of like, I think again, the shock of like, oh, warm hands on my usually very, very cold face, uh, mm -hmm. sort of like pushes back, like rears back, uh, and I think I just like duck underneath the arm uh, and sort of like go to the other side of him, like 
trying to like do wide swings and like I just like keep ducking under, which doesn't happen a lot. I'm not usually the sh- a shorter person in a fight, but we're uh we're a little spooked by this, so we're we're trying to like avoid as best as we can. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I get out unscathed. Love that. <laughs> So he kind of almost does that kitten thing where someone, after having their hand on their face or body and pulls it away to go, rah, <laughs> kind of lifts off his paw and is just like kind of hissing and roaring and turning to follow you. Um, he's going to remain his movement there. Uh, I forgot the button. But before, at the end of his turn, there is a layer action. As drips of ice start to form from the ceiling and suddenly just jagged right ice starts falling down um i need everybody to give me a dexterity saving throw okay it yes i have danger sense so i mm-hmm. get advantage on deck saves when i'm not blinded deaf and or incapacitated yes. okay not a great deck save, but we'll we'll make it work. Okay. Yeah, that's a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> um, so unfortunately for you, Billy Jean, you're so distracted by this face to face fight, you don't notice the spell work of the layer happening above you. But everyone else, you do take notice and at least only take half damage for this. Um, So let me roll that. And uh, so for you, Billie Jean, you take seven piercing damage and everyone else that saved, which is Wisteria, Stick, and Sister Primrose is uh, three piercing damage. Oh yeah, it just comes and all the ones that just miss uh, crack and break and splinter across the stone and wood floor. Um, But with the layer action done, it is now stick. So you see your good friend, Billie Jean, they moved around the shade of a creature and fully Mm -hmm. engaged face to face. Um, And after kind of the splintering of ice coming down, uh, you have your moment to take your action. Okay, I'm gonna, um, would I be able to go in behind then? Is that, because... Yeah, yeah, you can right. take flanking. I am a DM that runs with flanking. <laughs> so, I'll, um, I will, I'll run over, and, um, I'm gonna grab my rapier, and I'll do a big stab, stab, stab. Yeah, stabby stab. Um. Hold on. Do no, I don't want to use a charge. No, I did something weird. Ignore that. <laughs> All right, I just want to roll it. If you click on the little die that comes up when you hover over your item, it will throw it in the chat box, and then you can click attack in the chat box. Oh, okay. Our audience, we're using Foundry. Some fun button clicking through all that. (laughs) Stab, stab. That's quite the stab. So yeah, as uh, you take your position um, ready to assist Billie Jean, you go and thrust the blade in and describe how you want to take that. Um, I just sort of like run silently and just like, just stick him. All Um, right. And then... They can roll your attack damage as well as your sneak attack. Which yeah. sneak for you as our delightful roguish friend at level five is 3d6. I'm just gonna press this three times. 
All right, so we have six piercing, as well as, I believe that's 11. Five plus three plus three is 11. Am I mm -hmm. mathing right? Yes. Yeah. 11 sneak attack. Beautiful. And I'm going to use my um, cutting action to disengage. All right. And just step, uh, uh, go back again. All right, so you make your stab, and you hear almost like a grumbling wind hiss come from where your stab wound went into it and being the entity that there is there's no um this or anything coming out it's just kind of a burst of smoke and soot um and it does instinctually try and react and turn around to react to you but you've already backed off and starting to take <laughs> your movement <laughs> is it okay, that's all i'm going to do all right, so after uh, Stick has gone in and stabbed with Billie Jean still engaged, Sister Primrose, it is your turn. Um, I, I'm not sure what she would do. Um, because she's not super bad being right up in his face, but... Mm -hmm. Hmm. How much damage did you take, Billy Jean? Um. I took seven points of damage. It it's not a lot. You don't need to heal okay. Billy Jean right now. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess. Um. Sorry to disrupt, but for retro, because I know sometimes people get distracted. Did you want to rage? Just to clarify. I have not had a turn yet. Uh, oh, that's right. We didn't so go into this. I, I cannot no problem. Rage. We're good. We're good. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to figure out a way for Sister Primrose to get up close to put the bell to attach the bell to the ribbons around its neck. Because we can all see them, right? The ribbon around its, his neck. Yeah, you see, um, <clears throat> taking a look, is that there is a kind of burgundy, but very soot and blackened covered ribbon that's kind of tattery and ragged. Um, it might be hard to try and get up in there at the current point, as he's being pretty aggressive. <clears throat> um, but yeah, you do see a ribbon sitting there. What happens when she rings the bell? She just when moves her arm. Like, she's not <laughs> taking an action yet. She's just moving her arm to ring the bell. Yeah. What does that do? So when you move your arm to take, uh, to ring that bell, you see that the ears on the entity do kind of curl back. And for a moment, uh, there seems to be, like, a shuddering shift through the smoke and soot in its body. And it seems kind of stunned and not able to make a reaction for this turn. Okay, that 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 helps. Um, then I will uh, summon a spiritual weapon on right. the other side of the creature so that it is flanking. I do you do flanking rules? Yep. <clears throat> then I will summon the spiritual weapon on the other side of Billy of the creature of where Billy Jean is, so it's flanking. <clears throat> it what does looks your like a just a big classical well big by Jerbeen standards classical broadsword uh with a red gem in the pommel um i don't know if any of you know anything about Jerbeen lore but it's it's a famous Jerbeen weapon anyway <clears throat> Beautiful. Uh, oh. Spiritual weapon. Ah. Foundry, please help. <laughs> please. Do the thing. Uh, cast spell. Nice. There we go. Attack. With advantage. That's a 23 to hit. <clears throat> yeah, that hits. So roll your damage. 
It does uh, eight force damage nice. <clears throat> as it cleaves through its side. All right, so you see as that force strikes into it and another kind of smoky burst of soot leaves the shade's body. And it goes to try and react, but after ringing the bell, it just has a bit of a, more of shudder to it, and it's not able to create its reaction. Um, anything else this turn, dear sister? Um, I'm assuming we're all fairly close together, so I don't think I need to move any closer to it. Um, unless Billy Jean wants someone else to be up close. Um, I think Billy Jean is, I think Billy Jean is focused on like, Billy Jean doesn't think that y'all are like the type of people to get into fights with like large claw monsters. So Billy Jean is more than happy to be the person that like stays in melee while y'all either dart in and dart back out or just stay in the back. <laughs> Okay. Um, I yeah, will stay you can tell that she doesn't distance. have any expectation for like y'all to join up in the melee fray as well. <laughs> okay, then I will stay where I am. All right. So with that, we go to Wisteria. You see, after just a little tussle, jumping from the shade, trying to tack Billy Jean and stick striking, followed by this beautiful magical sword almost seemingly appearing in the space and doing its strike um the shade is very well distracted before you wisteria what would you like to do um because billy jean is the one staying in melee range wisteria would like to give her um her talisman um so that's if you do get hit i can use her reaction in order to deal damage to the creature um, but you have, Billie Jean has to be with the talisman for that to happen. So if you're amenable. <laughs> um, I, nor Billie Jean, knows what a talisman is. Um, <laughs> but if the priestess person uh, yeah. that has been really cool to her throughout this entire <laughs> year uh, and is also like working to get us and the town uncursed hands her something or like asks her to do something <laughs> she's gonna do it perfect uh you get a little you get a little necklace a little round necklace shaped like a sun just hold on to this um does she still have her action after doing that yeah i say that's a quick enough action for you to just pass it off even just to slip it onto billy jean perfect okay then with um her ring of spell storing, I'd like for her to cast Guiding Bolt at second level. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Let's go. I know how to do that. Bolt. <laughs> yeah, so for your spell, you can uh, click on uh, a little, like, D20 will appear beside the spell when you're hovering over it. Click that, and it should show up in the chat. Then you can click attack, and then click damage if it hits. Okay. Perfect like that mm. yeah. we don't oh we do like that that's higher than i thought it was okay 16 <laughs> just hits <laughs> so describe how your guiding bolt comes from you and strikes the shade and becomes a glowing form around it for that advantage for the next person yes um that like the rest of her magic is still going to be that same like morning light golden glow um, usually this would actually be coming from her talisman, but she just handed that off. So, um, it's coming from the tips of her, uh, right wing feathers. And it's just like, it seems to travel down the iridescence at the top of her wings and all the way down and then shoots out, um, from the wing tips, um, to then engulf this terrifying spirit. Beautiful. So now you can click that damage. She's cool. <laughs> and when this strikes in this pure radiant energy, 
for a brief moment, you see a ripple effect, a soft, like, morning dawn light, joined by a soft blue glow as it ripples through. And for a brief moment, you catch the entity wince, but underneath the shade, there is a bit of white fur that just flickers into view for a second before dissipating. And you seem to have done a lot of damage with that. Like, more than you anticipated. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, she's gonna just back up a little little step, because if she thinks she just hurt that thing badly, she does not want to be close. <laughs> uh, and that's gonna be the turn. That is fair. So, as you move away, Billy Jean, your head's in the game. You know your friends are making moves. You got handed a talisman. But it's your time. Uh, yeah. So, this is obviously some cursed stuff. I don't think Billie Jean understands a lot of the magic of what's going on or, like, the identity of what this cat creature might be. But, like, she... She messed with a fireplace once and, like, got whisked into Iceland... And then she messed with, like, the workshop here. And suddenly this thing came. She's... Yeah, she's not feeling that confident. Um, and I think that, like, specifically, like, trying to... Trying to, like fight a curse thing she's she's feeling kind of scared at the prospect of that uh and i think she like knows of stories where like you don't fight curses you wrestle with them and all in all it just seems like a better idea to keep this creature with her instead of like letting it go out and be fighting the rest of these people mm -hmm. so she is going to bonus action rage because yeah. she can do that <laughs> um <laughs> and uh she is going to attempt to grapple i'm pretty sure a grapple replaces an attack roll Yes. Uh, and she gets two attacks. So she's gonna she's gonna try to like a post athletics check against their yeah, either against their athletics or decks. Um, okay. acrobatics, yeah. Oh. Uh, we get advantage on strength checks when we're mad. Uh... <laughs> yep. And they're gonna go acrobatics because that's their better move. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, it is awkward. Is... You did grab their face and you felt their hands almost sink and almost go into a void a little bit. So trying to grab their body, like, is this a body part? What? <laughs> yeah. The... Also, icky. <laughs> this is why Wizards of the Coast gave us two attacks. Uh, we grapple again. Uh... Oh no. <laughs> Let's see if they do any better. And yeah. they do. This is just a very slippery ghost like entity. So it's able to move quick enough, even in the state that it's no longer to fully make a reaction on its turn. It's still quick enough to avoid your grabbing of it. Uh, that is fair. And I think that Billie Jean is going to use the rest of her movement to try to like put herself between like wherever this wherever like the rest of her like party is so the creature has to go through her to get to them All right. uh, and that's her turn beautiful so billy jean circles around and now the shade though being pummeled by uh the other party members and especially after wisteria's hard hit oh, wait. on that guiding bolt i'm sorry Yes. Can I? I have one point of inspiration marked yes. off here. 
of I'm a I'm gonna try to beat the 21. Okay, go for it. No. No. <laughs> keep keep good it try. moving. I am so sorry. <laughs> good try. It's okay. It, it's a good a good thing to think about. Um yeah, the creature Though it's being pummeled by everyone else, uh, Abilogy, you are at least keeping its attention as you're just physically in its space and trying to grab at it. Um, so it will once again attempt to do its multi attack on you with a bite and a claw. But now that you're raging, it may be a little uh, less damaging if they hit, because I believe a 12 does not. <laughs> So much similar fashion to before. It may be slippery to you, but you're just as slippery to it. Yeah. Yeah, we're both like... Okay, baby. Equally matched. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, Dancing. I have a cat here as well <laughs> that is trying to claw me and bite that me. That is your <laughs> physical now manifestation of the shade is now with you physically. <laughs> But after that attempt at bite, again, just could not land. So it's going to try to follow up with a big strike of a claw, throwing its arm at you. He's not having a good time. He is distracted. He is uncomfortable. Something between the bell ringing and that odd mix of glow that he's still now lit as the guiding bolt is still leaving that advantage for the next hit. But he is struggling hard to even get a strike on you, Billy Jean. Yeah, I feel like we're both just like dancing around each other, like both like clashing, like wrestling each other for a bit, like breaking away is. Um... Yeah, for the rest of the party, if it wasn't so scary, it would almost be poetic to watch. Because <laughs> it's just these wisps of smoke of flying arms kind of around you happening. And of course, all the glowing spells and lights happening. But he's not going to move out of his space. He's going to stay with you. And with his turn over on the round of 20, a layer action is going to happen. Um, this time, he's a little frustrated. So he's going to send out a sudden cloud of black soot and ash um, into the space. So I need everyone to make a constitution saving throw. Oof. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Not the natural, too. I thought I was good at these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, Billie Jean, Sister Primrose, and Stick. You see this black cloud, and in Stick Street, you go to take a breath to hold your breath, but in that, the soot just comes out too fast and goes into your lungs. Um, so for those who failed, let me roll my damage. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, I maxed that. 12 points of fire damage as you just feel it burn oh. into your nostrils. And for Wisteria, you manage to cover with your feathers enough to keep a good chunk of it out and only take six points of fire damage. Uh, and I am a path of the totem bear barbarian. Oh. So... Uh, fire only hurts me for half as much when I'm raging. Beautiful. So only six for you then. All right. So as the soot now settles back and dissipates and makes a hissing sound on all the ice, that is the layer action done. So stick. You're up after seeing just the wrestling of just non-hits happening between Billie Jean and um, the Shade. There is still a brilliant glow from Wisteria's Guiding Bolt that's giving you a really good insight to strike this entity. Um, mm. But it is your turn. Um, and I'm going to... Since it worked really well the first time, Stick's gonna run in again. 
Um, and do some more stabbing. Yeah, stabby, stabby. Stab. Oops. Stab. <laughs> <laughs> no! You, is that with advantage? Did you roll advantage? No, no, I didn't roll advantage. Okay, okay well, you have advantage. Lightning bolt, advantage. Oh, no. <laughs> so, unfortunately, this time... Maybe because you are a creature that loves sparkly, shiny things. You're a little mm -hmm. distracted by the glow. Um, so you try and make another stab, but their shifting body trying to make their moves against Billie Jean, it just goes through a section of sooty mist and misses. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, um... I'm gonna disengage again. And like, now it's just a practice. I'll be back. <laughs> Beautiful. You disengage and back <clears throat> off. Kind of sliding um, along the floor. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's all Stick's going to do. All right. So with Stick's turn, the glow is still there in Sister Primrose. It is your turn. How? <laughs> Uh, yeah, she, she's, she's hurting quite a lot. She's, uh, well bloodied. <laughs> mm. Um, let's see. It takes a bonus action for the spiritual weapon to attack, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Seeing that everyone took quite a punch, aside from Billie Jean, um, she uh, lifts her sensor into the air and chitters something in Jerbeen, and this, this silvery mixed with golden light just shines out as uh and and washes over everyone as she casts beacon of hope <clears throat> uh so you now all have advantage on wisdom saving throws and death saving throws nice and everyone regains the maximum number of hit points possible from any healing so if you pop a potion it will be the maximum of that beautiful <clears throat> Uh, update my spells. And then, uh, well, because I'm uh, hurting quite a lot, I'm going to <laughs> bonus action healing word myself. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> um, she, yeah, I, I, she does not have a lot of hit points. It's, uh, it's not great. Uh, which is a maximum of eight. I think. Yes. Eight. Nope. So she heals eight. Which puts her out of bloodied, which is good. Yes. <laughs> Do you feel this this feeling of small creatures standing up to the giant scary world as this courage and feeling of hope surges inside you. Right. Beautiful. So now it is Wisteria's turn as you feel this energy and magic and seeing Sister Primrose uh, cast this upon you all. And as a fellow follower of the same god, it's a familiar feeling too for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very comforting. Um, but what would you like to do? Uh, <laughs> heal our friends. That's what we would like to do. <laughs> yeah, heal. Um, how much does Sister Primrose need to be at full? Uh, right now, seven. Okay. Um, then as a bonus action, Wisteria is going to use Healing Light um, and use one of her D6s for that. So we'll, you'll regain six if i understand your ability correctly yep that's how it works great 
Um, oh, I should I... mention the spiritual weapon. The spiritual weapon goes away because it's a concentration spell. Ah, okay, so that brilliant sword whoosh, goes out. Um, I don't... spiritual weapon concentration? I thought it wasn't. Oh, no, it's not. Never mind. Double check. Then it flickers it's... for a second, but it remains. <laughs> it's just It's just a bonus action to make it do anything, so that's fine. Yeah. Sorry, my voice is really going. I, I apologize. <laughs> no worries. Um, in a scary moment. You're going to try yeah. to do things. <laughs> um, I don't know, because that's a feature of her being the type of warlock that she is. So does that count as a spell, like a use of a spell? Yeah, feature is always interesting. I just assume if there's no wording that says action or bonus action, it's just something that can happen. That's okay, how I would says bonus action. <laughs> Um, which just to confirm would mean that I cannot cast a spell with my action. Um, well, feature is not a spell in itself. Um, because usually if, if you cast a spell, then you can't cast another spell. Yeah. Um, but since it's a feature, you can still cast a spell. Great. We would also like to heal stick. <laughs> um, how much yeah. do you need to be at full? Hmm. <laughs> Fifteen, but I still have twenty-four hit points. Okay, well, I like my friends having health, and we don't all have seventy, seventy-something hit points. <laughs> I have twenty-eight. <clears throat> yeah, I got twenty-five. Um, okay, then in that case, we're going to use again from her ring, uh, cure wounds at second level. So that would max heal for two d eight, so sixteen, putting stick back to full. That was such a great move by Sister Primrose. That just set up yeah. so nicely. <laughs> Beautiful synergy going on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and yeah, just Wisteria is going to tuck in and like, her friends are looking better now and that's what's important. Okay. So with that Billy Jean, you're seeing Stick dart in and out and Wisteria and Sister Primrose doing their thing. Um but you see before you the shade still has that shimmering glow as no one is able to land a hit on it yet. Um, but is very much in a distraught state and is almost going wild trying to strike out at you. But it is your turn. Uh, yeah. Like, um, I think that... I think that Billy Jean is just really, like, locked in and trying to... Um, and trying to like hold this creature. Um, and I think at like some point it sort of like changes to be like, oh no, this creature is like in some sort of like disarray and needs mm -hmm. help. Um, Cause like this, you know, you're, you're acting weird um, and you're seeming like a person in like the mannerisms that you're picking up or is she seeing that? I don't know. She gets a feeling. She has a negative wisdom score, so mm -hmm. I don't know what she's seeing, but she's feeling. Let me let me grapple this person before yeah. anybody else gets hurt. Uh, and we'll we'll make some more athletics checks with advantage. Okay. 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 Let's see how they do what against do you, you. They roll low. Yeah. <laughs> so. Just the stunning nature of everything going on, it tries to turn from your grapple, but you're already directly on it. Uh, wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have this have this creature thing in a grapple, and I'm gonna try to. Gosh. Um, I'm gonna try to no i'm just gonna use my movement uh to drag it a little ways away from the rest of everybody here um uh, and i'll just try to like uh get them a little separate from the rest of the group so they're not like within a reasonable amount of range. It seems like 
the legendary actions just like go off throughout this place. But um, yeah, she's gonna just try to like get some more distance uh, between herself, the creature and the rest of the party. Uh, and like maybe try to like force them to the ground uh, and just be like, okay, okay, uh, Kitty, maybe we calm down now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, she just has this cat in the headlock and is trying to get them both prone on the ground um, away from the party. Yeah. So he is struggling hard, so it does take... A uh, slow you to about half your movement, but you're pulling them towards almost where they came out of, as everyone else is more backed towards the entryway on the opposite side. Um, but as you finish your turn, it is their turn. Uh, they're going to spend one of their attacks trying to break away from you. Uh, so you can give me another strength uh, check, or athletics check. <laughs> all right so you're trying hard to force them down but as you press your body into them it just feels like you're sinking into like very gritty sand once in a while you'll feel a bit of pressure of a body but still is a weird sensation that's getting into your fur um but he quickly almost with the movement of his tail <clears throat> sweeps at your ankle um and forces himself up with that movement uh, with his remaining action, he is going to do a quick turn and try and swipe at you. He's not happy that you gave him a hug. And I believe this time a 21 hits. <laughs> uh, yeah, but there's a reaction that happens now. Yes. Oh. Um, because Billie Jean has Wisteria's talisman, um, the creature takes three points of psychic damage. Um, and if it can be pushed 10 feet away without being nearer to Sister Primrose and Stick, that would be cool. All right. So we will do the damage on that. And it is 16 halved because you're raging as this is only a slashing attack. But as that lands, there is that burst of psychic energy. You see their ears curl back and they kind of curl up into the ball as they're launched almost right by you, uh, Billy Jean, and into that stairwell space away from Stick and Wisteria. But that was some damage dealt and given. But they will spend the rest of their movement to get up and just try and make it back to Billie Jean. And with that, that is their turn. But layer action on 20. This time, a dark shimmer happens at your feet. And as you do a quick glance down in the light, you see the ice that covers the floor turn jet black. And you feel your feet starting to slip a little bit. Uh, movement for the rest of this round. Um, if you try to move, you'll have to make a dexterity saving throw to see if you keep your footing or you get knocked prone. Hmm. That's for the everybody? For everybody, yeah. Uh, so with that layer action done, it is now stick. You see your friend pulling the creature away and it very quickly reacted in kind, not happy before getting unknowingly launched into the darkened space of the stairwell, but its glowing eyes still jetting from the darkness <laughs> and trying to clamor out. So how far away would it be now from me? Yeah, it's not a super big workshop space as you mm -hmm. all started this fight. Um, and with your given movement, you're probably trying to stay within that 10 to 15 feet of it. So I'll say you're maybe about 20 at this point. All right. So if, if I go up to it, I've got to roll a dex saving throw. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to do that. Okay. Hey. 
So with a 19, you do feel your body slide a little bit, but mm. you're a well-balanced uh, lizard type folk. You can handle this and I'm you can kind of just slide along and in like a silent whoosh, you go along the ice. And perhaps the momentum will help me stab him. You're just skating along, ready to go. And with a 26 to hit, that definitely does. So you come in almost ballet on ice. And you wish. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to roll damage. Um, do I roll sneak attack for that as well? It's still engaged with Billie Jean. Um, and yeah, so your sneak attack still goes. Oh, wait, your attack has advantage. Because no one hit it since the Guiding Bolt. Oh, okay. Hold so on. you can see if uh, it ends up being a critical if you want to try rolling that again. No. Wrong critical. I'm wrong crit. <laughs> wrong crit. So just the first one. Um, okay. So you did nine points of piercing followed by 12 sneak attack. Beautiful. Um, okay. So it is now just pouring and almost uh, dissipating off this creature as that brilliant glowing light dissipates from your solid strike, but it's now looking a little more lankier and like it's fading into itself. So this says with my rapier of the wood, I it has two charges, so I want to cast that. It doesn't say if it's an extra action or anything like that. Uh, yeah, so um, you speak a command word to cast Spike Growth with a DC uh, save of 16, centered on yourself. Yeah. So Spike Growth is a second level spell um, ba -ba 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 -ba, and creates difficult terrain for the duration. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, when a creature moves with into it or within it, it takes 2d4 piercing damage for every 5 feet of travel. Yeah. Okay. Alright. I think that counts as an action, though. Yeah, usually, it um... Yeah, this is a Humblewood item, so they did not write... Yeah, they don't say whether it is or not. But it I just think, says... I think when I, when usually... I click on it to attack, yeah, it says, do you want to use the ability as well? Oh, yeah, I think that's how Foundry sets it up, but I think with oh, charges, okay. yeah, it's an action to do a charge, unless okay, set that's otherwise. Okay. I will, um... That's I'll good just... thinking, though. Something to consider. I'm going to disengage, but I'm only going to go, like, five feet away. Yeah. Because I don't have much movement anyway. I want to stay close. Okay. Wonderful. So, next up, Sister Primrose. You see, um stick just sort of skate on by and do a quick uh stab into the creature and it's looking very very rough at this point and you almost feel um sort of a waver in the bell as it sits off of your arm that has your shield um and what kind of waver like it's trying to reach out Okay, I ring it. What happens? So you ring it for the second time. And you see another shudder across the shade and the soft blue light for a moment. And everyone sees that dark, sooty coal form of it shimmer for a second to something of white fur and just almost an essence of a green suit that is fully formed on it before dissipating out again. And its form withers a bit more, almost uh, shrinking down. I bring it again. <laughs> Seems you to be doing something. For a third time. And this time you see um, the shade's head turn and the embers and its eyes go blue like a soft kind of baby blue 
before what was once an enraged expression dissipates into a somewhat sad one. And all the soot and smoke and coal that makes up its body poofs out into a cloud. Not of any damage. It does cover Billy Jean, though. And <laughs> all is left is just a gently floating ribbon in the air. Uh, uh, Sister Primrose will attempt to make her way across to the ribbon to tie the bell to it. Right. The floor is still <clears throat> super slick, so give me a dexterity saving throw. If that, uh, I would like to spend my inspiration on that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You're feeling yourself slipping a bit there. <laughs> there we go. That's better. All right, 21. After you kind of, not quite used to it, but with your determination, you power yourself forward and bring up the bell. And it is a little high, but the ribbon is slowly kind of gently wavering through the air. And you place the bell on it. And after the final tie, you hear a very soft sigh. Just from unexplicable in the air, a very soft sigh. Um, as the ribbon gets a faint blue glow encompassing it. But no form takes it. You see that there is a loop where a neck could be, but there is no form appearing before you. If I can, I'd attempt to... I'd like to attempt, or maybe Billie Jean could reach the creature's an appro approximate neck area <laughs> to put the ribbon around. <clears throat> um, Pull the ribbon! Hello. We're just returning this. Um... Please don't attack us anymore. Uh, a very soft voice comes out in reply before anyone reaches the ribbon. It is. It looks like a solid ring, like it is wrapped around something. Just nothing is present. Um, but a soft voice, weak, reaches out. Very gentle and very deep. Um, it's like, says... Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, it seems my domain is in disarray. I'm. It feels so weird. Uh, who are all of you? I am <laughs> Billy. <clears throat> we finish each other's sentences all the time, but sometimes they're the different ones. <laughs> Billy Jean. Uh, I come from the mountains. Uh, I am new in town, but I have not seen you all around. Well, you're in my domain. It's. I'm assuming you are all humble and bird folk from. You look like Humblewood folk. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I'm I'm Wisteria, but um what what is your domain? Oh, you're in the domain of delight that is Hearthcrest. Thank you for doesn't having seem us. Very, doesn't seem terribly delightful so far. Hi, I'm Sister Primrose from the Abbey of the Other Heart. Um hi. Yes, um, unfortunately, uh, I am Farir. I am the, uh, hmm, I don't like to say ruler, but I guess this realm is under my watch and celebration uh, from Adria, which I sense two of you have a connection to the Dawn Mother. Oh, that is so delightful. I can see why my bell turn to you all. Uh, but I do not have the strength. Uh, maybe if you are here and my bell brought you here, that means you're here to help. 
Always happy to help. Good. Uh, yes, we come because our house is cursed. Uh, there are many sooty lopes. Everyone is asleep. Uh, do you know anything about that? They seem to like have come through our house to get to your house. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the city lopes are mischievous fey things, but they're only acting because something important of mine was stolen, and the ribbon with the bell drifts over to the portrait. You see, during glow tide, portals open up over the world of Everdeen, and when creatures are lost out in the world and don't have a home to go and celebrate their traditions, they come to my realm, and they take in celebration and good tidings, and they sometimes leave without remembering the experience, but the one rule here is to not steal anything. But unfortunately, someone stole my bag of tidings. Uh, that's what I use during the nights when my spirit is strong enough to come out into your world that I can leave toys for the children. But someone has stolen it away. Um, do, do we remember the name of that man that just like had a big red bag and yes was handing out stuff so you recall uh the mopach named jasper who looked very much in tattered rags and seemed super eager to get everybody to pull toys from the red bag that matches very similarly to the bag that's in the portrait ah uh, jasper runs classic scheme I understand. Uh, like, she'll turn to stick. Uh, you you remember the uh, Huluku heist back in mm. the day? It's one of those. Um, Classic. We'll, uh, we'll curse and in our house and your house if we return this back. Yes, if you bring it here, you'll be able to bring back the life for both our realms. Just uh, just the bag or the presents too, because the the, the Mopach who stole it has kind of been selling all the toys. Well, they are gifts to people. I will not take back what has been given, if, especially if it brings them joy. All I just need is my bag. That's a good part of what my being is, is with that bag. But here, and he, uh, you just see the ribbon, a bit of a glow, and a glow enter the hearth. And he says, you can exit through my hearth. It'll take you to where you came in. Um, but one last thing I think I will do to help you in case you're in great need. And the ribbon and bell comes drifting back to you, Sister Primrose. And for a moment, as the ribbon unties and the bell floats, you see that face of the jolly Elderan, just a very faint blue in front of you, and his nose meets the bell before it kind of sprinkles out like a little bit of starlight. And just a voice softly echoes, ring my bell when you're in need. And be safe. And Thank I think you, sir. that's where we're going to end it. <laughs> Good a job, everybody. Thank you. This was great. <laughs> All right. So well, lovely. With that, as we end our part two of our three apart holiday special, Fun Times. Let us give a round of applause for our delightful players here at this table and let them all introduce themselves, any projects they might be up to, and where you can follow them in the same order as before. So, Loira. Great time for me to be chewing. 
Yeah. Yeah. Hi. (laughs) I'm Loira. I use she, they pronouns, and you can find me at Miss Winford. That's M-S underscore Winford on Twitter, Twitch, and sometimes Instagram. I write tabletop supplement reviews over on the cold, no, the cozy cauldron.wordpress.com. And I have been playing Wisteria, who uses she, her pronouns, and is a celestial warlock. And I will be ecstatic to see you here again at 2 p.m. Eastern next week. All right, beautiful. Anita. It is I, Anita. Oh, gosh, I had such a fun time. Uh, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I You can find me at Anita the Lesbian on Twitter and TikTok. You can also find me here in three hours uh, where the finale of Invincible Sword Coven will take place. Um, we've got intrigue. We've got drama. We've got swords and magic and magical girls. It's great. Uh, come through tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern to Girls from Beast Worlds uh, and, and see us uh, get get some revenge. Um, yeah, I think that's all I was supposed to say. Anita the Lesbian on Twitter and TikTok. What I'm doing very, very soon. Oh, um, I was playing Billie Jean. She uses she, her pronouns. Uh and it's been great, y'all. Um, I'll pass it back. All right. Thank you, Anita. Let's go to Kaylin. Hi, I'm Kaylin. I use um, she, her pronouns. Uh, on Twitch, I'm Inkmo, I-N-K-M-O underscore. So I'm a creative and variety streamer. And I also have a um, Dungeons & Dragons stream I do with um, another good friend of mine called We Didn't Roll For This. But we're very very silly um and i played stick a gecko folk thief who um uses they them pronouns and likes lots of things and cheese <laughs> <clears throat> how is yeah. that for a character trait <laughs> i also like cheese jesus a rogue that is all about the cheddar <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a choice. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, super. And last but not least, player and producer for our lovely show here, Nev. Yeah, hi, everyone. I'm Nev. My voice is almost gone, but it's fine. I am uh, the producer for this show and for Girls Run This World. And I'm playing uh, in this lovely, wonderful, wholesome game and in another Christmassy game on the 18th, uh, same time. Uh, And I'm also in um, uh, Alec Azam's Squid Menace every two weeks. Uh, The next one is on the 13th. Uh, I think it's around the same time as this, even 2 p.m. Eastern. I use uh, she uh, blah, blah, words. Yes, I use she they pronouns, and I have been playing Sister Primrose, a, a cleric of the Abbey of the Alder Heart, uh, who uses she her pronouns, and uh, I am loving this. Thank you, Natalie. Hey, I am so happy. And Thank yes, I, so Natalie. <laughs> yeah, I love Humblewood. Um, but yes, I'm Natalie. I've been your dungeon mistress for this delightful little game, uh, also written by me. Um, and you can find me, uh, Ghost Candle, on Twitter and Instagram or other places like my own Twitch, where I'm a variety streamer, uh, at Ghostly Candle. That's with an L Y. Um, Tuesday nights, I also play over on Zeal Zaddy, where I play a very emotional. A uh, confused tiefling druid who's super awkward and had a big emotional moment this week, and that's Tuesday nights at nine thirty. Um, been super fun, um, and yeah, uh, make sure if you have not already follow Girls Wins These Worlds on everything, and you know subscribe as it helps all of us who play and create and everything that we do with this channel with this group. Um, everyone is just a pleasure to play with and work with and create with. And we want to keep making that snowball effort of making sure everyone uh, has this beautiful, safe place that we've developed together. And of course, to the founders and council who's been able to 
keep all this going because I would not have been able to run this if it wasn't for them. So uh, thank you to them. As Anita said, come back later to check out the finale of Invincible Sword Coven because you gotta just just leave the tab open. Leave it open. Walk away, take a nap, do whatever you need to do. Come back in a few hours and you're already there. Um, and of course, we have a ton of other shows that just happen practically every day. So check back. And remember to find us next week, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for our final end of three parts session and see if this delightful woodland creature group can save Glow Tide. Anything else? Just remember, follow us. Just check for those casting calls. Maybe you can be at one of our tables. See you next time. Bye.